There are a lot of people out there who like to speculate in cryptocurrency, but they don't have the funds. Well, they just need to follow Uncle Kurt's patented, simple, ingenious formula. Step one, save money. Step two, make money. <laughs> Let's talk about saving money. Welcome to Cryptonomics, Principles of Cryptocurrency and Investing. Thank you so much to all those people who are sharing these videos and podcasts out there. 1,000 Christmas blessings and miracles on each of your families. When you want to invest in crypto or stocks or anything else, you have to save up capital, which can be hard to do. I've found for myself that saving small amounts of money every week can make a big difference on the long term. But first, you have to find that money to put it into a fund to build your own financial freedom. And it starts with paying yourself first. Pay yourself first. I said it last time, I'm saying it again because it's that important. If you wait to the end of your pay period, hoping there'll be some money left over that you could put into your savings, you're leaving things up to chance and it's probably gonna not work out for you. These days there are tools like automatic savings plans, which will take money, put it into a savings account on the day you get paid. You can also set the money automatically to go to the exchange, ready to be launched to the moon. And there are apps which will round up your purchases and put that little bit of extra money into a savings or investment account. So there are apps like Raise in Australia, Monzo in the UK, and Acorns in the US. The message is plan ahead. Plan ahead in a way that accounts for your own nature. If you know you're going to spend the money that's in your account, don't have it in your account. You ever go and look at your bank balance and you notice that it's in double or single digits and you wonder, where in the name of Eris did my money go? And that is because your spending habits are unconscious. And if you want to gain control over them, you must first make them conscious. I used to carry around a notepad with me all the time and every cent that I spent, I would write it in the notepad. Even if I put a couple of coins in a busker's guitar case, I would write it down probably not in front of him though. No. Then it would take all those figures and put them into a spreadsheet and categorize them. These days you can do that with an app. There's one called You Need a Budget, which I've heard is very good. I'll put a link in the description to a review. At the end of the week, you go back and review your receipts and your budget and you ask these three questions. Did I need to buy this? Did I even use it? Is there a way that I could have done it cheaper? When you look at the categories of the expenditure, you might notice that you actually spent a lot more than you thought on entertainment and eating out. You might have spent more on eating out than you did on eating in. Just the act of making this data conscious can change your habits. Consciousness transforms everything to which it is applied. The reason a lot of people don't get ahead when it comes to money is because they haven't practiced restraint. Yes, Restraint is a skill, and when you lack it, you go into a mall and a cute sales girl comes up to you and starts telling you about the specials, and before you know it, you spend $300 on wet wipes, French ticklers, and a new puppy. That's why it's a great reason to learn to meditate. I was talking to my monk friend in Wat Tham Krabok the other day, and he told me, that there are two foundations to the meditation practice there. One is that you meditate with a specific intention and the other is that you meditate for a specific period. So if you say you're going to chant your mantra for as long as the incense stick burns, that's exactly what you do. If you're a beginning meditator, you're probably going to feel all kinds of impulses. You're going to want to get up after five minutes, but you do what you set out to do. You persist and that builds your restraint and your integrity, you practice fulfilling your will. Heard me say this before, stay grateful. Now that's not just a cute catchphrase, it's actually something that's very practical. Now when it comes to saving money, the idea isn't to be stingy, the idea is to be prudent. So you don't have to take it too far and become a tight ass or try to get more than you're putting in, that's going to put pressure and strain on your relationships. Money is important. It can never be as important 
as your friendships. Te lo juro. If you come in trying to save money with the mentality of a miser, you could get all the money in the world and you'll still feel poor. So the idea is to be grateful, to feel wealthy in what you have right now. Feel the abundance of somebody who has a lot of wealth and the restraint of somebody who is comfortable in his wealth, somebody who understands and respects the power of money. The more grateful you are for something, the more you learn about it and the more you respect it. Take the time to be grateful as a practice. A prudent fiscal strategy is like a beautiful poem. Every word and every letter in its place, everyone important, some empowering and some delightful. Everyone part of a greater whole, aligned to its highest purpose. Some shout outs before my battery dies. Don Cole left a comment on Facebook. Is that really how this bloke sounds or is he taking the piss? Yes, Don, this is how I sound. And yes, I am taking the piss. Paul J commented on the old Paradise Paradox welcome video saying, why do you change your accent multiple times per video? One second nasal, 49 seconds Spanish, one minute Eastern European, one minute seven seconds nasal. Well, Paul, when the good Lord has blessed you with a beautiful voice as he has done to me, the natural inclination is to push the envelope, to take it as far as it can go and not confine yourself to your nose or even to one accent. I'd like to send a shout out to one young lady who left a comment on one of my YouTube videos more than a year ago, criticizing me very harshly, talking about the shirt that I was wearing and even a nail that was behind me in the video in my bedroom wall. I didn't like that comment at the time, but you know what? That comment was a grain of sand that stimulated the growth of a pearl. And it's one of the reasons I put so much pride into the videos that I make today. So thanks to all the haters, you only make me stronger. And I want to thank my haters too, because they be downloading my stuff so they can talk crap about it, but it benefits me. <laughs> please, 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 please share these videos and podcasts. I put this content out for free. I put a lot of time and effort, and thought and experience into these videos, trying to create a work of art, a holy ball of light of crypto knowledge given away freely and generously. Every time I make one of these videos or podcasts, I get to a point where I'm like, nah, I could put in this little bit of extra effort to make it a little bit cooler, or I could just be lazy and publish the thing now. 99% of the time I make the growth choice. I decide to make it cooler. And I do that for myself because I want to create something that exceeds my standards, but I also do it for you guys because I want to create something informative, entertaining, compelling, and enlightening. Now, you don't owe me anything. You don't have to do anything for me, but I would love it if you share these videos. Thank you so much to these people already sharing these episodes. I appreciate it so much. It's really cool when somebody listens to something that you create and they like it so much that they want other people to enjoy it as well. Thank you so much for listening. Take care, happy holidays, and once again, stay grateful.